Today we're going to learn all about stem cells with NAS. Right guys, welcome to another episode. Today we're here with Nasli Eshiki, right? Eskichi. 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 Yeah, I already murdered the name. That's the way it starts. She is Absolutely. a friend of Giuliano and she is a scientist. She works, uh, she's a PhD student working in disease modeling using stem cells at the University of Helsinki. And, you know, we thought it would be interesting to have somebody who's from the field to uh, learn more about stem cells from somebody who works with them. Uh, so that eventually when we'll have episodes about the role of stem cells in aging, we'll be prepared. So, um, right, before, before we dive into the science questions, um, can you uh, tell us exactly what is the field that you're studying, what exactly that you're doing for your PhD? For my PhD, we are working on mostly de developmental disorders, right. which affect human growth and development. So we are trying to understand the mechanisms of the disease, so we are using stem cells. What, what brought you to this particular field of research? Life. <laughs> uh, Sorry. As a little girl. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, like I cannot give an exact answer for that, but I was always curious about how human body functions and how like diseases disrupt this function and how the diseases happen, what, what are the mechanisms, so mm -hmm. I started to, like I have my major in, I had my major in biology and then I decided to have a master's degree and then PhD and like I happened to be here and, right. and stem cells are like providing so much potential to work on. Absolutely. Yeah. But I, I suppose like that probably the interest in this particular like subfield came after you got your biology degree and or maybe something that you had even before like you were already interested in figuring out diseases. Yeah, I was. I, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah, even as a kid, I was curious. Like, I have the, all the books for children were uh, about stem explaining, cells. not stem cells, <laughs> <laughs> but the <laughs> immune body and the diseases and like those kinds of things. Did you have a phase where you were thinking about becoming a doctor? Yes. Yeah. Of course. Just thinking like that definitely sounds like. I mean. you. <laughs> Like you first decided to become a doctor and then you were just more interested in actually like... Biology, not the medicine. Yeah, and like figuring out the... How that happens, like yeah. other than curing them, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And all, I like me that I wanted to become a physician and then I switched to bio biology because I didn't get into med school. Oh. Yeah. oh, sorry, very different reactions <laughs> out here. <laughs> so you mentioned stem cells and... Uh, so, can you explain to us, in layman terms, what they are? Stem cells are the cells which have the ability to make all of the specialized cells in the human body. Right. So, that means they have the capacity of, to differentiate all the cells we have in the body. So they can become like other types. Yes, that's the point. Yeah, that's that's. They're like all blank slates. Cells. They're yeah, tabula rasas. Yep, and yeah. they can posh reference. I know. <laughs> wow. I'm so smart. I right. get science. Um, I mean, like, um, I understand that uh, they uh, they they can besides being able to uh, differentiate, so becoming different types of cells, more specialized, more. Uh, particular to a certain type of tissues like like heart muscle or whatever they also unlike other cells they can go on reproducing in principle like indefinitely and unlike other cells which have kind of a hard limit yes that's also true uh, especially for embryonic stem cells right so there is like some kind of hierarchy like like embryonic stem cells can divide a lot and then there are like stem cells that can divide a lot but not that much or yeah, pretty much something like that. But I mean, uh, embryonic stem cells can divide indefinitely. They have the potential to proliferate indefinitely. There's no limit at all. No, 
for remedying stem cells. Those are some lucky cells. Like, well, I want some of those. Do I have them? Where do I have them? Well, you yeah. had them. <laughs> oh <laughs> no, I lost. <laughs> when you were an embryo. So we have no stem cells in our body as adults. No, we had. Okay. Not the embryonic ones. Now that makes sense. <laughs> you don't have embryonic ones if you're not an embryo anymore. <laughs> Wow, smart. Uh, you, you didn't lose your job during the trivia. You're trying I'm to gonna lose it now. Yeah. Okay. Hi, boss. I mean, that connects uh, to another point, I would say, because like if you say that uh, the embryonic stem cells can reproduce forever, so to speak, then uh, it kind of connects to what pop science says about stem cells, that they are immortal. Uh, can you clarify? Like, because like, immortal is a terrible word because it is misinterpreted in mm, a million ways. Yeah, exactly. Like, immortal is not the right word probably, yeah. but yes, they have the indefinite capacity of dividing, so that makes them immortal. I Maybe I can say that they just don't age like other cells. They don't go to huh. cellular senescence. Okay. The replicative senescence they okay. don't have because they have telomerase, mm -hmm. so their telomeres like they maintain their telomeres so right. they can divide indefinitely okay so that means that yes they are immortal and that's actually a point that we we, we can expand on because again um, we have new terms we have telomerase and we have telomeres so um, what is a telomere oh <laughs> okay uh, all the cells like somatic cells in our body which are body cells Mm -hmm. have telomeres that are shortened gradually as they're dividing, as they're dividing. So they are basically the edges of the chromosomes, yes, right? Yes, yeah. they, are, they are the edge of the chromosomes and in each dividing there, they keep shortening. Right. And at some point, they, they have a limit at, uh, and it's called replicative senescence and then it leads that cell to die. When, when when they get too short, basically. Yes. Right. So when the telomeres run out, that's when they become senescent cells? Did I understand correctly? It, yeah, it's it, it's a process, a replicative senescence. And it then they stop dividing and kill themselves, basically. <laughs> Work done, time to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that, that's true for, for somatic cells, right? Because they yes. They... They have a hard limit they cannot uh, overcome. Whereas stem cells have a uh, way around this problem, which is the fact that they have telomerase. Yes. So what, what is that exactly? Telomerase is an enzyme that maintains the telomeres, telomer length, mm -hmm. and they, it protects them from shortening. Okay. So they get rebuilt? After a cycle, they just rebuild it, right? Yeah. yeah, basically, yeah. I think you can, okay. can say that. And this is something that uh, only the stem cells possess. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable with saying only, uh -huh. because I'm sure there's an exception. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> probably, so I'm not comfortable with Biology is made only. only. Yeah, e exceptions, exactly. Yeah, that's something. If I have learned anything since I've been in this business, it's that basically biology book is a book of exceptions, not a, not a, not a book of rules. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's so, an exception for everything, so... Do all stem cells express telomerase? Um, I... I can say neither yes nor no for that question, but uh, yes, embryonic stem cells do express telomerase, but we also have adult stem cells in our body. Uh -huh. Like right now, we mm -hmm. all have them right. in different tissues. Even Vera? Even me. Even her. Okay, well done. <laughs> so, regardless of their dividing capacity, they have low or absent telomerase activity. Comparing. I did not know that. Yeah, that actually comes as a surprise to me as well because I, I, <clears throat> I thought the, that they they at least had you know. But they they don't divide as much as the other embryonic stem cells or other, um, or some somatic cells in our body. Like they basically stay dormant. Okay. Unless they are needed to divide. Right. That, that, that means, if I understand you correctly, that means that those stem cells 
eventually will run out of steam even though they can't replicate indefinitely if if they don't have any telomerase their telomeres are going to run out one day as they are called to replicate I, to be honest i'm not exactly sure either but i just know that they have really low activity even absent sometimes but they can they have also self-renewal capacity so they can make more stem cells if in case of injury for example in the yeah. for example muscle stem cells I mean, that, that makes sense. So would they then, I guess then, after they, they keep, they divide when the body needs them, but at one point, probably during aging or time, they will just become quies, um, senescent, basically, or silent probably, anyway. Probably, yeah. Which mm. would, would be connected to the stem cell... Uh, all mark. Uh, the stem cell uh, depletion. We're gonna get there. It's yeah. hard to say at this point if the the whole mark, the stems, uh, the stem cell exhaustion whole mark will be out before or after this video. We're nowhere near. We're gonna the see what of, happens. Of being able to make predictions, but like, stay tuned. And there will be an episode at a point in time. Wow. I know. Uh, I'm very, very precise. Uh, hopefully, precise. It's in our lifespan. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully, that's what we're working on. Um, by the way, so uh, this is something that got me puzzled for a while. So actually, I came up with this question. So you can blame me in case you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I always been confused for for quite some time whether stem cells are the only cells in the body who actually are called to divide when necessary, or if somatic stem cells, uh, sorry, uh, somatic cells, so cells that already have been specialized and they, they got as far as they could, as I understand. Uh, if they can divide too? It depends on the cell type. All right. But yes, of course, our somatic cells are dividing. Okay. And by each division, their telomeres got shortened and they're... Right. So, so basically... But there are exceptions. <laughs> I mean, of course there are... Or, I, 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 I like, know. Like terminal differentiated neurons, they don't divide anymore. Okay. But the other somatic cells, yeah, they they can. Yeah, they are. Which divided. which which makes it which makes sense now. I mean, I understand. I was actually browsing Wikipedia at a point some few days ago, and like I was having a look at the hierarchy. Like I didn't know that there was like an entire hierarchy of multipotent and pluripotent. I, sometimes I didn't know, but I didn't know the entire hierarchy. So like basically, I. I the somatic cells can only turn into, can only make it, make copies of themselves. Yeah, right? exactly. That, Which the called story. mitosis. Yeah, they yeah. only give rise to to daughter cells, which are the same of the. Yeah, so that that's not differentiation. Yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, it's that's just, just replication. replication. Zero. Yeah, not same. replication, but divide, division, like division. Okay. Divide, proliferating. Yeah. Whereas basically, when when you have a, I again, this is my guess based on what we have discussed thus far that when you have a stem cell of some kind that is capable of making different types of cells basically it will split into like a smaller version of itself and then a more specialized cell is that what would you say guys okay uh, embryonic stem cells are pluripotent mm -hmm. which means they can make all the types of cells in the body and when they divide, they also have self-renewal ca capacity. So uh -huh. they can either divide and make two new stem cells, uh -huh. or they can differentiate, or they can divide and make one stem cell and one cell which is primed to be differentiated. All right, so that differentiation will happen later on. Keep, yeah, basically. Okay. That's like a good. progenitor or something? Of yeah, the stem, yeah. Of the specialized cell. Yeah. You brought this on yourself. What is a progenitor? Isn't that an English word? It is. It, it is English, it's basically, but it's a scientific English ah, word, okay. boy. Uh, it's a cell that will then give rise to a specific specialized cell line. So a progenitor of neural cell, uh, a progenitor of neuronal cells, for example, will only generate future neurons, basically. So kind of an in-between stage. They are kind of also stem cells. I mean, not stem cells, mm. but they are... 
I, like kind of adult neural stem cells. Yeah, it's a neural stem cell. It's a neural stem cells. Yeah. It, they they are multipotent, not mm. pluripotent anymore. They mm-hmm. can only make neurons. Okay. But they are not neurons yet. So it's some kind of in between state between what between the stem cell that generated it and and the cell that they're going to specialize into as i understand it like it, it looks like it sounds like the progenitor is like in between the stem cell that created it that created the progenitor and the cell that is going to be it's, it's neither i so guess yeah, we yeah, could yeah, say yeah, that yeah sure yeah. I'm All just right. really happy that we got the answer like in between here because I was about to ask like so what is the difference between pluri, uh, pluripotent, P- potent. yeah, and multi? But then you answered it like pluri can become basically anything, yes, and multi can become like multiple things, like the name says, I but think... like in a specific line, sort of a thing. Yeah, exactly. Like for example, homotopoietic stem cells are multipotent; they can only give rise to blood cells or hematopoietic. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Basically, I think the best way to envision this is that you imagine like a, a tree-like structure that starts from a root. There's just one thing, and then it splits into more things, and then like the root of each branch only can branch into specific sub-branches. Yeah. And and as you go down the tree, you basically run out of specialization. There's only one thing you can do, and you do that when you get to the bottom, which is the somatic cells. Right. Yeah. Cool beans. Yeah, actually, I think we I think we covered that. I'm actually. I got educated. I actually yeah. wanted one of those things. Do you think well, stem cells. <laughs> yeah. I keep them in a jar. A tree yeah, root. <laughs> they yeah. are though. I'm sure they are. I've never seen one live, but no, I wanted like a chart of, of um, you know, uh, hierarchy of cells and stem cells oh, in particular. Right. I wonder if there is a complete one. Probably not. I'm guessing that there is something around the corner that we still don't know about. I'm pretty sure in specific tissues you can find on Google. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. A specialization tree, for example, from um, I don't know, oh, well, janitors like onto sp- yeah. Oh, yeah. That was extremely interesting. Yeah, uh, that was really I'm... interesting. Right. So you were saying at the very beginning that you um, you use uh, stem cells in your research in order to model diseases and figure out how they work and maybe treat them. Hopefully, that's the whole point. So, um, what diseases are you uh, trying to model specifically? Okay, we are mostly working on diseases which are affecting human growth and development uh-huh. and one of them is Kalman syndrome which uh-huh. is a genetic disease and really common in Finland. What does it do exactly? It, it's, it's caused by a deficiency of a specific neuron type in the brain and it causes a developmental delay uh, unfertility, okay. uh, lack or delayed puberty, with both men and women. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a like growth related. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Growth retardation. Okay. So and um, how uh, how exactly do stem cells play a part in, in modeling this disease? I think I can say that like we are using stem cells as a tool. Okay. I mean, I'm not working on stem cells, I'm working with stem cells. Right. Because they have so much potential on in every field. <laughs> we are just using them as a tool and differentiating them to relevant cell types for the disease which we are working on. So that's you're basically cool. using them to make the cells that you need? Yes. You that's, that's so clever. Like, and like so smart that a human body has something that we can just take and we can just like, okay, now become this. I need this. I wish it would be that easy. <laughs> <laughs> As a non-scientist here, this that's basically how I understood it. You now, take some cells, you tell them like, change. And they and do you, it. And you look at them really, really yeah. intensely and they die. No, because yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're so, they so fragile that even if you just look at them badly. And you're, you close the door to nosely death. No, because I don't work with stem cells myself. But apart from you, I also (laughs) know other people who work with stem cells and everybody hates them. Because they're so fragile that if you fart in the room, they'll die. I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> they don't fart in the room. Well, they can't. Yeah. That happens to people as well, depending on the circumstances. Yes, yeah. but they're really annoying. I mean, all the stem cell scientists I know have a love-hate relationship with the stem cells. Because they're so cool. Like, they're really so cool. 
that it's impossible not to love them, mm -hmm. but it's really difficult to work with them. So yeah, you hate them at some point. Like I sometimes feel like I have a kid, <laughs> like because it it they require constant attention. Like I'm gonna go to the lab when I left here, for example. Here. You have to go there and, yeah, and, and cuddle them, the yeah, and hug them. Yeah. Okay. It's nice that you thought that they were kids because from the way you were describing them, I I just started thinking about like really talented Hollywood actors that are also total. <laughs> Like you're just like, here's your coffee, and they're like, mm, no, I wanted a mocha. <laughs> well, Jesus, I mean, you okay. never know what they want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you were talking about how you divide the stem cells or like turn them into something different, differentiate. Different. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. I can pronounce stuff. Anyway, like, how do you do that? You said that it's very difficult because they're mean people who like mochas instead of coffees. <laughs> But like, how do you then do what you do? Okay, uh, there are many differentiation protocols for each cell type, but basically we are trying to mimic what happens in the human body. So while they are differentiating, they do that using the signals from the environment. So we are trying to mimic those signals using signaling pathways basically we are like inducing them or inhibiting them to direct them to the right direction that we want cool. so g tell me if i got it right you use chemicals that resemble the chemicals that they would receive in the human body yeah small molecules chemicals Protein, recombinant yeah. proteins. But you give them artificially rather than yeah, because are, you don't have the rest of the body yeah, around it. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> we are, they're on the, in the dish, yeah. so we're just putting them into their media. So you're not actually fooling them. You're actually giving them exactly the same chemicals they would that they would receive in the body to turn into neurons. I mean, I wouldn't say exactly. Well, yeah, similar. But yeah, we are trying to mm. mimic the process. Okay. But like the stem cells that you're using as a tool, like you're trying to make the type of cells that uh, are deficient in the disease that you're modeling. Uh, like you're doing that in order to learn something about those cells and figure out why they end up, they wind up lacking in, in, patient, that, in those patients or? Yeah, basically yes, because we are not sure how the disease happened exactly. Uh -huh. I mean, we know there's a defect on those cells, but we don't know if they cannot, if the problem is about their formation, their migration or their function. Right. So like, it's not necessarily so that the patients don't have them, but it might be that they have them and they don't work they, very yeah, well. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Or they have them, but they are not in the right position they need to be okay. because they cannot migrate properly yeah. or they don't function correctly in the place or they may be like lower in number. Right. Because the thing is regarding the migration is that there are specific niches in the brain only a couple of places in the brain create new neurons. So those neurons, they have to migrate where they, they need to be. And these cells, apparently, they might just be lacking the tools to go in position. Might That's why they need to migrate. Man, the human body is so friggin' fragile. Oh, yeah. Like, it's so cool, but then you hear about these tiny, tiny, like, on the cell level, we're talking about tiny, like, inconsistencies or something that goes, like, just a bit wrong, and suddenly we have, like, a full-on disease. It's just, yeah, I mean, it's not scary. very likely that it will happen, but when it does happen, then you have a real trouble trying to fix it because, like, it never came with the blueprints or the instruction manual. Yeah. It's an entire reverse engineering problem with no instructions whatsoever. But, I mean, like, I would imagine that it's quite challenging trying to figure out which of the three options it is. At the same time, I mean, like, then how, how do you how do we know in the first place that the problem lies within these cells if we're not sure which of the three options? Uh, I mean, like, I'm just you know, uh, I'm not questioning that that is that I just can't figure <laughs> out how 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 they figured out that this is the issue. One of the reasons is, for example, those cells are born in olfactory bulbs, mm -hmm. which are like basically nose area uh -huh. and some of the patients lack olfactory bulbs, bulbs completely. Um, I was curious to ask if there are 
besides this disease that you mentioned, so there, there are others that you work on, or is this like your specific target? Uh, yeah, mostly common syndrome. It, which common syndrome consists of two things. One of them is another disease, which is congenital hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. Oh, the what? Can you say that again three times fast? <laughs> I'm even surprised I've been able to <laughs> well able done to say that once. But what is what is that? That is a tongue twister. That is the disease is uh, originated from the lack of those neurons and making growth retardation, infertility, and other like growth defects. When it comes along with sense, lack of sense of smell or reduced sense of smell then it is termed as common syndrome okay okay so that's the difference between them yeah yeah so there they have some there is some some ah, there is some similarity between them i understand yeah they yeah common syndrome is congenital hypogonadism plus la, la, lack or reduced sense of smell okay right Right, so thank you very much for joining us today. Good luck with your research. Thank you for having me. Maybe one day we'll have you again. You will have updates about your research. Or who knows, it would be really nice to have you. It's been very fun, very interesting. And again, thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you to all of you who watched this video until the end. You're true troopers. And if you have any questions or anything you want to tell us about this episode, your opinions, your experiences, Please comment down below and if you want to see any future videos, subscribe, like this video and yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye! Cheers! Bye. <laughs>